Yes, welcome back to Groovy TV, our home cinema channel. At this moment, I have the wonderful opportunity to report on a rather unique home cinema construction project that is currently being completed in these hours and these days. The crazy thing is it was introduced here nine years ago. And back then it was a sensation in terms of technology, equipment, and of course later in terms of picture and sound quality. Because back then we reported on this cinema for the first time and now I'm here for the third time. And in this room I used to sit, it was quite bright and white and is hardly recognizable now because the whole cinema which is behind here has been completely dismantled and has now been completely rebuilt in these last weeks but after a completely new construction design and functionality because the key word that also came into play here is trinov and waveforming. Customer received first trinov altitude, entire project was still in beta phase during that time. I recall when he called and said I want this trinov altitude. I know they're still working on it, but I install all updates consecutively. And behold, actually after all this time, because the Trinov had been delivered before, that's almost 10 years ago. Yes, so during this time, this Trinov was constantly updated. It has been updated hardware-wise so that it still corresponds to today's Trinov that comes off the assembly line today and also has full functionality. Well, what could be more beautiful than integrating waveforming here too? However, it wasn't easy in the given space. So, the room was fully dismantled and rebuilt completely. And of course, with the help of Holger and Dennis. And the two are also here. And now we're going over there and showing you what the current status is. Because today was the day when the first measurements were carried out. So that implies all of the speakers are connected and then the corresponding tests are carried out and so on. And that's been happening all afternoon. And in the past few hours, a lot has occurred. And how it looks now and what's been considered here and which technology is used here for the first time, you'll also find out all of that. And I'm going to continue here along the path now. And the immigrant who knows the video knew that the big cinema is now around the corner. And there is also the good Holger. Additionally, there is Holger who possesses... Do you have an A3 printer, I see? No, the customer printed it out himself for his craftsman. But that also looks big and beautiful, right? Yes, now you can see how big everything is. Exactly. So this is a typical blueprint that you have created here, which is not typical in terms of content because it is unique. Exactly. So we have here, this is not a blueprint, but an acoustic plan. I must correct Patrick a bit. And we have completely reconstructed the cinema in this area and have consistently designed it specifically for waveforming technology. That was the customer's objective. The customer also attended our North Sea demonstration cinema last year and was equally impressed by the enclosure of all our speakers. And although he already had many speakers before, we still had the potential to optimize that, the setup, the assignment, and that's why we completely redesigned the room. On the one hand, this refers to the setup, the waveforming, and also the overall room acoustics. Exactly, and it must be noted that he was previously in our cast, so the whole thing sounded, actually it wasn't planned, but of course I lured him back, got the relevant examples. And then you talked on the phone and then he came straight up and said, now we have to somehow implement and realize it at my place. Of course, you already had a requirement because the room size is quite impressive. Exactly, the room size is impressive. We have here almost 10 times 8 meters, so 80 square meters. And of course, we can't go any further with our classic double bus array with 8 to 12 inches. That's why she's become a bit more and a bit bigger. So what I can see is that you now have subs here, both horizontally and vertically, which doesn't matter ultimately for the housing. Likely done as projector is outside. Also a big elimination we'll show you again in the picture. That was indeed the barco. The barco gate is still there, right? That's the barco gate and it has to be placed outside because it's unbelievably loud and produces so much heat. And that's why we had to turn the subwoofer sideways in the back because otherwise the compartment wouldn't have been enough for the projector to illuminate the six 10 meter wide screen in the front. Okay, also I see you've calculated the exact distances, in this case the angles, everything precisely, as it should be used for the technology. Everything was used except the subwoofers. So the customer had all the speakers before. And here, for example, we have also done things like left center and right center due to the screen width. This means that behind the screen, there is not only one center speaker, but also a left and a right center speaker, as well as a left and a right front speaker. A front white on the right and a front white on the left. Additionally, regarding speakers, we've included all feasible items that the customer already possessed. Have you ever added up how many there are in total now? 
Overall, there are 41 channels, including 16 subwoofers, which means 25 speakers on top and bottom combined. Let's enter. The first requirement was no wall before. It had to be added here because you only had the big glass pane and then the curtain. The acoustic curtain was previously recommended to the customer seven, eight years or six years ago. And that was then removed here because of course the glass pane, everyone knows who has already seen more videos from us, is of course absolutely counterproductive. On one hand in terms of sound and on the other hand also light, darkening, etc. That's why a new room has been added here now. Come on then I'd say, let's greet Dennis. The good Dennis was with you the whole time. Let's pass the mic over. Dennis can begin here. I know that previously I think we also took a photo of you where you stood in front. Was it us? No, before and then we also went behind it. I think I said it so nicely you can already say it. I didn't know what was coming. Also. Let's say the measurements. Width is currently 6.10 meters. And now it is a Stuart cloth. That was actually a screen from the company image back in those days during that time period. There is still the positive sign. In the past, we had a different screen, and then he made a decision on an acoustically perforated screen. And this is a gray one. I'm not so sure now. What was that? Isn't it written at the bottom? Greyhawk, Firehawk? No, it's not written on the bottom. No, it would have to be massive. In any case, we have the canvas inside. I find gray fun. How long can I walk here before I even get to the other side? No changes so far. But what changed is the entire technology behind it. I can show pictures we got during the construction phase. That was quite impressive. That means here the subwoofers are arranged. Exactly. So we have strategically placed the subwoofers at the front and back, of course, to optimize the waveforming effect. Due to the width of the room, of course, there is also a volume, B, width, as well as the number of subwoofers, so that we can play both low and high frequencies with the setup. Yes, it is not really an array, but it is also included in the setup for optimal audio performance. Holger, if you happen to see these speakers at this very moment, which one is it, the colleague? Because behind it is actually the left speaker. Is that then your front left or what is it called now? Correct, that is the regular front left, which is also found in the stereo triangle in a normal setup. This is the front left speaker and the center left is roughly here approximately. The center exactly in the middle and the center, so on the right we stand center left, center right exactly. Again, that means you're calling him center now. This is a center that is assigned as center right and center left in the Trinoff. For proper voice projection across width, use Trinoff with front right or left speaker. Divide sound to create wide stage, achieving expansive audio experience spanning room width for proper voice projection across width. However, that does not mean that the singer who is currently performing here is six meters wide, but Trinoff can arrange it in a way that we now have a fully enclosed front stage here. Interesting for people starting to measure, consider when could I afford something like that. I'd like more center, e.g. For that we only need a trinoff, which is expanded in extreme cases as far as the channels are concerned. That must first be the base unit, for example, an altitude 32, right? Exactly, that depends on the number of channels. Could that already be a trinoff altitude 16? Then we briefly explain how, by simply assigning the channel. Sure, but you must not have used up a total of 16 channels yet. Right, of course, that is the point, and our customers usually always have the 16 to 20. Or 20. Or 20. I mean, if I don't have the numbers completely wrong in my head, you can consider it if it's under 4 meters, screen width. From 4M it's recommended. Otherwise, center is simply so far in middle until we're finally at outer edge, right or left speaker. This is Trinov's rough recommendation. From a width of 4 meters, one should definitely start thinking about it but you can also put it under if you want to. But from there, we've reached a point where one might say everything could slowly be a bit far apart. Also interesting aspect, speaker itself, briefly the model. I think we haven't mentioned that yet. This is a Quested speaker. Quested has been a professional manufacturer of studio monitors or still is. And this is one of the speakers that the customer had before. You knew her because you've been here many times, Dennis too. Anything else you can think of? Are there any with a high efficiency, whatever? I don't have the technical data memorized either. We have that information in the technical documentation for the planning. I cannot recall it immediately, but they are capable of handling tremendous levels of workload. You both went out. We actually turned up a bit. Your... <laughs> Would you all still like it if we could hear something when we listen to the setting and rehearsals, right? <laughs> so they both went out and he had a great time, a big grin. I also had fun. However, next door, it was still good to hear, it was pretty cool. Okay, left and right.
What I still need to mention is that when we listened to the rehearsal, initially we heard louder, but not all the clips. In terms of acoustics, dynamics and speaker imaging, it is easy to forget that one is in such a large room due to the exceptional sound quality and immersive audio experience. So I'd say such volume and control we're more used to from smaller rooms, because most speakers in such a room are designed for the distance, seating distance, which we have, so we're talking about a good six meters distance as well. They usually lose their energy by the time they reach their seat. Just then, you could tell they were shaking their heads and saying, go ahead if you think so. So I do not really care. Who is pushing the sound in there? What kind of electronics are available here? Also power amps? From the power amps, I'd now have to check the manufacturer too. That was already existing. The Dynacords. Your records and all the Zapfuber materials that were previously there. Okay, that's still a lot of money. We need a total of 16 power amplifiers, 16 power amplifier channels, so eight power amplifiers. And we have not even mentioned which subwoofers are installed here. Did we mention? No, neither the size nor the type of subwoofers have been specified. So here are installed 16 pieces of Mac Audio subwoofers, 21 inches. What is already powerful? Therefore, we have proper membrane surfaces here that are currently being moved. And you can truly observe that. Yes, let us proceed with hiking. They were positioned on tripods in the previous room up until this point. Yes. So that was no longer desired here. It's also not very meaningful. On the wall, done. Well, we actually built the room anew, so to speak. Yes, and prior to that, the speakers were in different positions, and we simply calculated the positions exactly according to the Trinoff speaker setup guide provided by the manufacturer. And for instance, this is the front wide, which fills the gap between the front and the surround so that we are truly completely even here in the wrapping. So I did not hear everything you said in the beginning, but I do not know if it has already been mentioned. The room isn't finished yet. No, we have. We will now. I wanted to let them write it for all those who have not finished watching yet. We all stand together. And that again, quasi in an intermediate step video. So today was, I would say, the big first measurement to see if everything really makes sense in the end. Because now, when everything is still open, now you can still adjust, fix, and so on and so forth. But, I mean, I'm always just the executing part. Here is the planning part, and I know it usually all fits, but still it's good. If you can easily access everything again, we can still easily adjust the angles above the screws and so on. If everything is once finished, hidden or so, then it is much more work, and therefore today the step. I found a part of the interior steps. The West is crazy about it. Exactly, they are also at the back. He already has one of those here. Does he have more in the front or something? They don't make any noise. That's the design. About the design, right? Yes, okay. So, even prettier fabric coming. Heard more LED tech coming, is it true? Exactly, a set of LEDs for ambient lighting, a few effects, so the viewers can already look forward to the upcoming video with anticipation. This will also be a visual delight here. What we are witnessing here is a construction site. But as Dennis already mentioned, this has been the perfect opportunity for us to accurately measure this room and make any necessary adjustments in the acoustics. But what we have measured and also heard, primarily we can basically leave it as is. So for all those who come across such a video for the first time, let me reiterate the topic of waveforming briefly. You now have eight subwoofers there. Mueller and Schmidt usually have a subwoofer, find a spot where the devices don't visually disturb and hope the subwoofer is somewhat audible at their seating. If we have spaces like this, you're the expert in planning subwoofers. You usually make 4-4, now it's 8-8. Eight, eight. You can do more or less, no problem. But why do people do that? And what's special about waveforming? Maybe we can do it again in seven or eight sentences. Then we have to ask ChatGPT briefly. Please explain in seven sentences. So the subwoofers are placed in front at physically calculated positions. Four subwoofers in the front are sufficient for smaller rooms. With this room width, we are at least at eight subwoofers. And these subwoofers, I'll turn it around, so these subwoofers create a flat wave front. That means there is not a single wave of bass that goes through the room like a water wave when you throw a stone into the water, but this wave travels from the front to the back through the room. And the rear subwoofers are there to actively cancel out this wave so that it does not reflect off the rear wall and come back because that creates a booming sound. This creates cancellation and that is exactly what we don't want. Our objective is to achieve the same bass response, the same energy, and ideally the same reverberation on all seats within this room. 
And waveforming at this very moment in time simply ensures that we can make adjustments to this fundamental principle of the double base array even more forcefully and precisely. That means we can now even change the reverberation from very short and powerful to something more booming, a slightly longer reverberation, so that maybe with music you can hear the whole instrument a bit more. And these are now choices that you can modify using waveforming. And with the most recent update, you now also have the choice to enable all subwoofers to play frequencies below the first room mode. So you have an even greater amount of pressure below the first room mode. Okay, Dennis has been active near the Gruby Cinema, and we were the first to mention that. We can mention it again, as we got the waveforming unlocked from inside to demonstrate it. Anyone who wants to hear is welcome to come on Saturdays. It's like my second living room. We have a folder with wonderful film clips, updated again, where you can feel and experience waveforming after 10 seconds, and the grin comes. You can rephrase, it's the experience in the past months, and then you were at the first customer where the whole thing was installed. Correct? Since then you haven't heard from him, he's in his basement. Also correct. Or instead, in his cinema. Was it built and planned? How? You were involved in that, right? Exactly, it was planned by us. The customer built it himself. But he contacted me again, saying that after Dennis was there and the customer, whose first name we can say hello, Peter, also likes to listen very loudly. Now some of his cinema, which he built, is shaking. So that means he now has so much pressure that part of the things are shaking. Exactly like that. And then you have today, and that is a bit more elaborate when it comes to the calibration. You must do something with each speaker, each sub. What must you do with it? To optimize waveforming, at first it all sounds very similar to a DBA, but each subwoofer, each chassis is driven individually. You can also combine things, but ideally each one is controlled individually because then we can compensate for all the, let's say, parameters that the room does not meet the requirements for. To make this work, we can't just measure at a single point like in a classical DBA-SBA measurement, but we have to measure a field, namely the auditory field where the whole thing happens. In this case, because we have to adhere to certain basic rules, we need to know the height of one measuring position in relation to the other, as well as how much space we have to the left, right, front, and back. Since the second row was not the focus here, it was constructed far back so that it still fits in nicely here. For example, we couldn't measure behind the position, then we would have got too close to the chassis. Behind the second row. Exactly. Let's turn slowly. I've shown pics, but let's just turn. Currently, that's how it is. Not planned to put cinema seats here, or is it planned to put cinema seats? Used to be cinema seats. No, so it should be such a huge one that the customer builds himself with his carpenters. This is just a temporary solution. I'm going to the back now. So this is the second seating position here soon, and now you have about a meter to the rear. You must have at least a meter back there. Exactly, so we need at least one meter, and actually you measure again behind the position. And we had to omit that because I would have had to go another meter from there, and that simply doesn't make sense. So we ceased measuring here at ear level, where typically there should be another measuring instance behind the ear level. Okay, feel free to look into the camera, because here it means that the whole base, this area where I want to experience this waveforming the best, could also be defined to a certain degree from the base area. Am I seeing this? Yes, without a doubt. And it is also important to note that waveforming should ideally be taken into consideration during the planning phase of the project. And then we also watch, of course, that's why I just said, how important is the second row? If I say that in 90% of the movies, someone always sits in the second row, you have to consider them differently than if I say colleagues sit there with us for football every three mows. Netrinov now has the big advantage. You have 29, let's say, preset buttons. This means you have a basic measurement and can modify something again, so you can say, this is now for parents and kids. They sit here. If all friends come, I set it up differently. These are variants that can be adjusted with a single button using a Trinov. Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's perfect. While I've been sitting here, I have to say I've had enough. We also had enough space to measure the second field here, you have to admit. So, master and commander. So they could pull my head down? Yes, it was nice. Okay, so now you have such a very extensive list there. I actually just want to show you that you already have to put a lot of thought into it in writing. And among other things, there are things like measuring points. There is a lot of information stored there for each individual speaker. 
Yes, for each and every individual speaker. That was the very first page. Those were all of the different angles. This is already page number five. Now we are talking about the positions of the microphone in the room so that we also know which position was where, how, at what height, at which position. These are all the channel assignments of the 25 speakers with the individual designations in the individual audio formats. Because of differences in naming, some speakers have different designations in Atmos compared to RO. You must inform Trinov about that. Kindly utilize this speaker as both this and that. All right, that implies you can assign each speaker an extra definition specifying which channel it should play back and so on. So theoretically and practically, you can also position three of the voice of gods next to each other, for example. And with Atmos, it is something else again. We did that as well. So the top middles, which are known from Atmos, that signifies the middle Atmos speakers, are stated here in this particular instance as voice of God. That means we have a very wide voice of God here, consisting of three speakers. Then I found page four here. There is a little more. The channel is still there. This is the same as before. We need to know where the subwoofer is. Front, back, top, bottom, which number? We must know all of this to find it again later. Okay, otherwise you can easily lose track gradually with the number. All right, I have understood. Good, all right. These are once again previous plans that you are currently making. Then of course, when you arrived, you rechecked all the cables, all the channels, and then the fun begins. So I actually accomplished that task yesterday already. Then we encountered a couple of challenges that Dennis and I successfully resolved this morning. Then tell me. For example, the microphone from the customer did not work with the extension so far, and then we took our own extension with our own microphone. But you must determine why you no longer receive any signals when measuring. This is the keyword experience which can assist. Yes, practice makes perfect. XP and practice make the master. You can go. In the meantime, I'll grab the mic, tell us more. What else to let go of? Having such a current microphone or that, I would almost say, pre-production microphone, is this still really Anutuk's microphone? Yes, that is with fixed connected cables, all those things, it still exists if one wants. The cable is still firmly screwed there with a toggle switch at the back. So all of that no longer exists. Okay, but the basic principle, the basic principle remains. That means you are doing, what are you doing, 3D measure? Yes, basically, because the distance between the capsules is clearly defined for the measurement system, just like the difference in height to the average capsule. And in this respect, with a measurement tone, all the data can be captured. What happens from the front capsule to the back left, to the back right, to the top. And so it's truly, I always say, measured three-dimensionally in space and not multiple measurement points relative to one another. And I think a question you wanted to ask earlier, but it didn't come out as we started discussing more topics again. Alone for the subwoofers, there were a total of 14 measurement positions times eight subwoofers in the front and eight subwoofers in the back. These 14 positions are always the same. There is a prescribed principle for waveforming on how to measure. Then you apply it to the dimensions of the space with the distances, which is what I meant. So it also means skillfully omitting measurement points as they could have a negative impact. If, for instance, I measure too close to a wall, the bass would amplify there. Many know wall-mounted installation. If I push a small speaker into corner, I hear different bass, as it should be. And of course, we must be careful not to introduce any errors through this. In this regard, one must adhere to the guidelines, but then adapt. Does it fit in the room like this? Does that make sense? Or do I need to add or remove some measurement points? But there is a general guide on how to proceed. Oliver, do you have something to say? I just wanted to say quickly, that's why we had already done the documentation in advance. That means we already knew exactly where we wanted to measure in advance. And then we only had to work through measurement microphones 1 to 14 in height at this position according to plan. When the customer insisted and we had a clear idea of the room, we initially refused. Then you suggested building walls, etc. We entered detailed work, but you also spoke with Trinov because currently all projects are coordinated with Trinov. How can you still remember how the initial reactions were? In the end, David received the planning from me, which the customer also received, of course, then translated into English. And David said, everything looks great. The room is predestined for this, even if it gets a little tighter in the back. Everything is fine with waveforming, thumbs up. And he is already looking forward to the fact that the oldest Trinov or one of the oldest Trinovs in the field has experienced this calibration today with a new HDMI board, with memory expansion, with 48 channel expansion. 
48 inch expansion, how can I imagine that? He opens the box and then installs the corresponding electronics or attaches an ADL device. In the end, it's just a license that you can buy from Trenoff. That means the Altitude 32 can be operated manually, not automatically, but it is already designed for it. Then the license is activated in the software and then you can use a digital output. In the case of the AES output being digital, it then has to go into a DAC so that we can convert this digital signal of these 16 additional channels into an analog signal so that our classic power amplifiers can understand it again. So ultimately we require 8 DACs purchased license extension from Trinoff to expand from 32 to 48 channels. I'd say let's return to the adjacent room because I think we're finished. We must bring our sauna towel along. Yes, we do everything and make an infusion next door. He has a minus 87 degree room here. We'll go in there afterwards for quick freezing. Again, here in the next few days, weeks, the remaining disguise will be carried out. That means the speakers will be barely visible, right? As good as. So here on the side, they are closing. They are all closed. The only ones you see too. The only thing you see is the ceiling speakers. You only do more disguise on the side, so your absorbers and everything else there is. Exactly, so there's still a little bit more coming. Exactly, there are nine more packages that arrived today. However, it is crucial to mention that we have measured it, allowing the customer to use the cinema during the Easter period. That is why two of our colleagues, Chris Markowitz and Oliver Klus, will also come tomorrow. We will then recalibrate the barcode at this location. And when everything is prepared, we will, of course, conduct a final measurement once more. So this is not the condition of a construction site that the customer must endure or perish, but rather this is solely to enable him to fully utilize the cinema. And it works. Oliver Kloss brings one, or there is already, I think, one, or no, the new one is coming, right? MADVR MK2 goes here. That means everything will be set accordingly. And at the end of the day, quite incidentally, we have the whole thing. You have also prepared a lot for us so that we can also show all projectors with Lumagen Radiance or this topic with MADVR, which has now become very attentive. So these are, let's say it casually, powerful image enhancers for the 4K HDR signal playback, but of course also for everything else that runs on it. See more with HDTV. He has another special feature, a 21 to 9 screen, so it can scale to 16 to 9 aspect ratio like other screens do. There are also various things that the MAD4R part can do automatically. Yes, you can use nonlinear stretching, for example, to convert from 16 to 9 to 21 to 9. Without seeing big eggheads and stuff like that. Exactly, because it is nonlinear, we do not simply stretch everything evenly, but rather we make decisions about where we want to create specific fields. Customizing is simple. And for image processors, this has occurred often and is relevant to the topic. It is merely the Trinov for the picture, regardless of whether it is provider A or provider B. At Trinov, there are also different models, small and large. There are also models for image processors. What do I need from this in my use now? Now let's simply proceed through this dark chamber at this point. At this point, there is actually even a small dumpling. And some people also know the room from the video back then. He looked completely different, not in the back left corner. Caution, it's going down here as this was where they tried to lift the subwoofers with a winch. Where tried, they succeeded, but with an extra organized winch. This is a... Uh... Tor, he actually still has his own cooling system here. So the corresponding technology and everything that comes with it, such as coolants, is transported through these hoses. Let into the projector. The entire setup had to be rearranged, and now it even has a clever solution to align it more because the hole, the old one, is visible on the right and it wouldn't fit. We really had to move the whole thing to the left again. Calculate everything in advance so there are no surprises. And also for waiting. To access it, it can now be guided backwards on the rail system, so you can reach the front for the optics and everything. So if there is maintenance work, he is now much more flexible. And prior to that, there was a regular museum glass in it. This implies that the sound of the projector also penetrated into the cinema room. And as part of the renovation, we have now also installed a porthole glass from Display Technologies. What we also have in our cinema is that we now have a perfect separation between the technology and the cinema room. If you're a bit surprised about the whole rack, maybe the following, until now the rack had two elements, but now with the conversion, he needed a third element for setup, etc. And he thought, 
though we have a tech room, there's a separate tech room here where, among other things, the entire Kaleidoscape system is housed. But now that space has been created here, he immediately got the Kaleidoscape players unsure, but I think 320. Full, 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 full. There are 320 Blu-rays in there. They are built in here, so everywhere, so that you... He isn't full, he still has room, and down there are players. That means he can access his movies right away. You may know this from the videos of the trade show. You always see covers that look like tiles of the movies. Then you say, I want to watch a movie with Tom Hanks. Then they fly in because then I see, aha, uh -huh, all movies with Tom Hanks are shown with tiles. Brilliant story. Unfortunately, not quite official in Germany in this way. I don't think it's available anymore. And above all, not with a German soundtrack. You have let very little of the original score run. Besides, I noticed something else. Power amps, those are for your chords. The red ones are the DACs. Those are the DACs we need to use for the digital outputs, which are 37 to 48. Then, to convert analog signals into Dynacords at the bottom. Then you have the Trinoff back there, and underneath there are also GND stages for other speakers. Then we have an Oppo player over there. Then we have a Crestron control system. This is a type of multi-room control system. He has full control over every aspect. Moreover, he can watch movies in the cinema by utilizing the projector. Exactly, that's a DCI projector like ours, so it would work too. The whole thing must be air-conditioned, of course. There's warmth here. So this will occur, and now Blochwind will close. Also, in the next few days, something will happen, but over Easter money can be observed. Network cables. Everything will be beautiful again. We are in the construction site. You just have to say that. But you can already see what impressive dimensions the whole thing has, right? Yes, that's cool. Come, let's go back again. Let's check if Julian can walk backwards too. Oh, does the light come on automatically? That is a nice feature too. By the way, the swimming pool is situated below the building. Wasn't it right? Yes, it was like that. Let's see if everything holds up. Good, I think a disguise will be put on outside. Here comes a disguise. Is a sliding door planned here or something? Here is already one in... Sorry, but this is more like a construction door and it will be operated electrically with a sound gimmick, like in SW. So, exactly. Yes, all right. Also, summa summarum, mega project, which is still in the middle of construction, but it is already fully usable with a corresponding 4K projector. Got to show loops again. Don't know his skills, but he's capable, right? Definitely too smart for you. No, if you look, you'll be blind for five minutes. Yes, you can't do that. Yes, but if you run and work, that happens. Okay, it doesn't auto turn off when it sees you. No, he's not scared of me. Okay, so we have that. We already reported on the giant screen, the brand new layout here, the mega subwoofers here. The Mac Audi guys were also thrilled when they saw this. I think they'd prefer to come and listen to it in person. Maybe we'll arrange that someday. In any case, we'll meet here again when all is finalized and handed over. Then I'm curious to see what it looks like. And finally, you should take a close-up of the projector hole afterwards, how close the subwoofers are, because it just went in here exactly one or two centimeters. I'll show it fast. Yes, exactly. Come on, go up there, but don't fall. What's the approx depth of the subwoofers? 40 centimeters from the case. Yes, yes, I'm not going there. I wanted to go home today. But the problem is you had to make sure that the light beam, which is slowly and surely spreading out in a preformed manner, doesn't shoot into the housing, so the light beam. And that's why they went up here once, and yet it was a super close story. Exactly, they'll also be covered with adamantium audio later, so there are no reflections from the housing in the light beam. And the housings are already integrated into the wall. You can see that the housings only stick out 10 centimeters now. They go 30 centimeters further back into the wall. Should we check if Union quickly reaches the end again in the he is extremely athletic, very athletic. Most importantly, he's slim, I don't fit. When there, he should feed. Yes, not now, exactly yes. We have a full canvas. Come, when Julian looks, I'll look from the other side. Yes, take a look. Julian should check and see what technology is there. Be careful with that hole, avoid ending up in the pool. And then let's see what it looks like behind. So everything live and in color. Hello, Julian. Yes, that appears quite tidy. There you can observe the quantity of speakers, the subwoofer. Then you perceive the additional speakers he already possessed. Everything neatly dressed. Oh, Julian's still running. My God, he brave. Caution, now small hole at bottom and cable. I would not go any further. All right, he saw it. And I would not want to fall through the screen. Hello, Julian. Yes, great, can't leave, need to turn around now. Haven't had a graduation like this before. I'd say that is it.
Let's check if we can find Julian at the next caution cable there. Yes. Ah, there he is. Okay. See you soon. Subscribe to the channel to keep experiencing and seeing these mega projects and more. And if you're into waveforming, visit us. To re-experience base and all related aspects, visit Holger on the Wookster North Sea coast. The fish stand reopened last weekend. He is happy. I have opened the season. I got the first roll of the season. Was still from the last. No, it wasn't from last weekend. No, that looked good. And you were fine later. Impeccable. My wife liked the fish sandwich. Nice. See you soon.